We'll have a crag joining us live. Gulliver, a very good evening to you. Um, the word powder keg is often used. I wonder whether you feel like you're in the middle of one right now. What's the latest you can tell us? Well, at the moment, people are wondering how to interpret those press conference, the press conference with Volodymyr Zelensky and uh, Olaf Scholz, and then that strange televised conversation between Sergei Lavrov and Vladimir Putin in Russia, where they were sitting at an even longer table than the one that Putin has been meeting foreign guests at, and whether it points to de-escalation. Although Zelensky did reiterate Ukraine's ambition to join NATO, which, as he said, is inscribed in the country's um, constitution, I think he rather danced around that question and didn't seem to want to place too much emphasis on it. The actual grammar of the phrase he used, he said, we would like uh, to join NATO. And he also said it's not up to us at the end of the day, because of course it isn't. It's up to the other member states whether they would admit Ukraine to NATO. Now, Olaf Scholz said that Ukraine's membership of NATO is not currently on the table, and he doesn't understand why the Russians are making so much of a fuss about it. He's clearly hoping to go to Moscow tomorrow and say to Vladimir Putin, look, Ukraine really isn't going to be joining NATO anytime soon. And possibly he wanted Volodymyr Zelensky to tone down his rhetoric about uh, joining NATO um, exactly for that purpose. And Olaf Scholz also announced that Ukraine had said that it would try to move forward on passing laws that it is supposed to pass in order to comply with the Minsk peace agreement that was supposed to end the war in Donbass back in 2015. Of course, it didn't end that war. It's never been fully applied because Ukraine says Russia isn't meeting the conditions that need to be met first. And it doesn't really look like there's any sign of a real breakthrough on that, but it did very much look as though they wanted to keep talking. And that was also what Sergei Lavrov was saying in Moscow. He said to Vladimir Putin, I think that we can keep talking and keep giving diplomacy a chance. Indeed, that sense of giving diplomacy a chance, Gulliver, as you say, I think is incredibly important at this stage. And I'm wondering where you are as, as you move around the streets of Kiev, as you, you know, go from uh, one domestic chore to a place to eat or just basically make, make your way around. What is the sense you're getting from ordinary people about how they feel about this situation, Gulliver? Everything in Kiev is pretty much going on as normal, although I would say that the tensions have risen a notch, particularly with the news that on Sunday some 20 private jets and charters, including one apparently that was full of members of the pro-Russian opposition party, the uh, opposition platform for life, as it's known, because these are rich oligarchs who've got connections in Moscow leaving the country. People seeing that started to think, maybe they know something. And of course, there have also been evacuations of embassies, various companies and agencies asking their people to leave Kyiv. So people are being warned that there may be military action and it may even be hitting the Ukrainian capital. But Ukrainian analysts continue to think that that's not very plausible. And the mood in the city does seem to be that people are beginning to be concerned, beginning to ask each other, have you packed an emergency suitcase? Have you got somewhere to go, maybe in the countryside or further? to the west? Have, have you got a plan if it does happen? People are talking about it a bit, but I would say they're absolutely not panicking and there's still a large proportion of people who really, really don't think that this idea of a Russian invasion that would reach Kiev is at all plausible. Gulliver Crag in Kiev for France 24. Thank you, sir, very much indeed. Gulliver will be joining us for the France 24 debate in